Will you stop standing in the stairways, cat? Hey, are you standing in the stairways? I always. Oh, wonderful. This is the equivalent to April Fool from the BBC. April Fool from the BBC. Yes, I've been given this letter from a friend. And I know what it is, so I thought I will open it. It's an April Fool from the BBC Capita. And if you want to have a look at what mail fraud looks like, uh, this is a mail fraud from a professional organisation. You may know them as the BBC or Capita. Please note the address. It looks like they're pretending that this is from the post office and you've got a parcel or something waiting or a letter that can't be delivered. But as you turn it open and open it, our officers visit an address every six seconds. Well, poor, poor that address. <laughs> every six seconds is a bit of a, um, a misnomer, really, because... I think it'll be a different address, won't it? Uh, see, buy a TV license. Don't need one? Tell us. No, I won't tell you. I don't need one. None of your bloody business. It's not illegal to have a TV. It's only illegal to watch a live TV. Don't be fooled by these uh, fraudsters. Oh, bless you. <coughs> bless you, dear. There are people about, but uh, very, very cagey. And, uh, I mean, I'm going to the shops, so I've got to be make it pretty clear that even if I'm going to go lottery tickets, I'm going with a shopping bag. I don't want to get stopped by police or anything. Then again, as a journalist, it might be very interesting to get stopped by police and see what they say. And uh, if I do, it'll probably be sound only. I'll put it in my pocket, stand still, so they don't uh, vibrate or anything. And hopefully, you know, they'll rub up against my clothes. And hopefully I'll be able to get a good, good enough voice thing. I could just hold it in my hands, I suppose. I think the power's gone in the houses there. So the fridges and people have been watching. I think the power's gone. Fixing it. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you. Well, this is today's dinner made by Jeanette. It's cottage pie. Cottage pie, yes, that's right. Yeah, okay. <sighs> well, most of those it claims are the elderly and the vulnerable. Mohammed Mutlib today told us about his family friend Ismail, just 13 when it took him. There were no underlying symptoms, there were no underlying illnesses that could have even made anyone suspect that he's in real danger. 
Ismail Mohammed Abdul Wahad's large family in South London today described him as a loving son, brother and nephew, saying his smile was heartwarming and he was always gentle and kind. But tragically, the family weren't able to say goodbye to him. No one else is allowed to be around that individual and that means you're on your deathbed in your last moments alone. And he was a young boy, age 13, without his mother, without any sibling on his, on his deathbed in the last moments. And that's very hard to sort of digest and really understand as to how, how lonely and how sad that, that moment must have been. 20 years a nurse at Goodmay's Hospital in the capital, Thomas Harvey died after contracting the virus. My dad was a really fabulous person. Um, he always put others before himself. A devoted father of seven, he told his family about his concern at the level of protective equipment. He expressed to my mum that they had a lack of PPE um, and that um, they had flimsy aprons and just flimsy um, gloves. Um, it was a case of that he just didn't feel protected. Grandmother because of her kidney condition, followed all the guidance. My mum was careful. She was isolating uh, for weeks before this happened. She was using all the sanitizers because she was on home dialysis. So she was extra careful, and yet still, somewhere, somehow, she picked it up. Every day brings more death and more heartbroken families, underlining how much we have left to learn about the killer in our midst.